curious what it looks like with the other two openings. Yeah, so we're, uh, we are yeah, in the process of creating that depth. And between T.C. Harrison, Josh Ahern, uh, Sam Brady, James Jackson, Elliot Brown, Hunter Stewart. I mean, we got a we got a slew of guys right there that we can uh, rotate in, and I feel very comfortable with. And I think we've started off um, in four practices in, in the right direction with those guys. And then we got some younger guys. Mike Mike Green's shown some flashes in the first day. Wes Weeks, Josh McCarron. So, uh, yeah, I feel very comfortable where where we are with the depth of those guys. Who's been working with the with the ones at that other inside linebacker spot? Yeah, it's gone back between Hunter Stewart, Elliot Brown, Josh Ahern, kind of a rotation of those guys right there. Uh, Sam Brady's got in there as well. So, yeah, there's a number. There's probably three or four guys right now that are fighting for that spot. Is it Elliot? Um, I thought last time I'd seen him, he was more on the outside. What's uh, What's been his progression? Yeah, he's, do, he's doing both. So there's there's a couple guys on our, um, on our team, Elliot being one. Noah, Hunter, um, that uh, really can play both inside backer, outside backer. TC can do it as well. And so that's when we recruited these guys and we play a 3-4, that's what you end up doing is you get guys that can play both. And uh, I think we got some guys that can uh, that have that versatility, Sam Brady as well. And so there's that versatility of guys that can go from the outside backer to the inside backer. What's Nick Jackson's role in, I don't know, helping to, to coach or create chemistry with with somebody else in that inside spot. Yeah, Nick's done a great job. You know, specifically right now, his uh, we call him his uh, little brother, is uh, Wes Weeks. So he's getting Wes Weeks ready. And uh, Wes, uh, man, he graded higher than any freshman I think I've ever, or ever any first year that I've ever been a part of. Yesterday, he had like a 92% in his execution. And I credit that to Nick, just working with the younger guys. Um, but just his leadership, uh, what he's doing by example, and what he's doing. Um, just as a leadership role to, to bring the energy and just bring uh, holding the guys accountable to the standard that we have here. He's doing a great job of that and uh, really like what him and Noah have done in the off season and getting these, guy pre- these guys prepared for camp. Thank you. Was it a pretty seamless transition from the, in the leadership standpoint? I know it's hard for some guys to automatically step into that kind of leadership role, especially with someone like Charles Snow or Zane leaving. Um, yeah. Has that been pretty seamless for Nick? Was he doing some of that? last year and how would you define his leadership style yeah i would say nick is uh you know i'd say initially he was a little hesitant you know trying to you know especially still being an underclassman or i mean i know he's a junior but sometimes seniors are the guys that take that role but i think as the off season has gone on and now as we get into camp here i think everybody's seeing that you know he is one of the main leaders on this team and by the way that uh he plays the game really is how uh, i think is his leadership uh quality of just being a leader by example and uh, by the effort that he plays with, the execution, the playmaking, and uh, he is starting to get more vocal, which I like. And uh, I think that uh, that will continue as he gets more and more comfortable with, you know, with this new role that he has of being, you know, one of the, the main leaders on our team. Does Noah kind of compliment him in any way with, you, you talk about the vocal part, like does Noah kind of step in there? Or they kind of yeah. come out back? Yeah, no, no, I think they're, I honestly think they're, they're pretty similar in their leadership qualities. I think. Both of them, I would say, mainly are more leaders by example, but they are getting more and more vocal. And I think Noah, what he's done a better job of this this fall camp is being able to hold guys accountable if they're not doing it the right way. He is speaking up, making sure guys um, are, you know, their effort to the ball is correct, their assignments, their alignments are correct. And if they're not, he's letting them know. And uh, I've liked that. And uh, just his intent and urgency to every play, uh, uh, I've really liked that about Noah and, and uh, Nick as well. They do a great job with that. What's it like having a guy like Chris Peace, who was you know such a big leader during his time at UPA, back on the sidelines with you all now? Yeah, Chris has done an amazing job. He's been helping us with our outside backers, and uh, just a guy that knows the scheme, that played in the scheme at a high level, um, and then he's brought some stuff back, obviously from the NFL, that are helping our guys. But the the way that he can talk to them compared to me is he's recently just got done doing it, and so just his experience and his knowledge that he can bring to that group. I've really liked, and I think they respect that. And I think the thing that uh, the most clout that he has is just, man, the way that he approached the game, his mindset that he approached it, not just in the film room, but on the field, his effort, his practice habits, and just being able to instill those in his players, um, I think is, uh, you know, it's, it's going to help us take a step forward as a group uh, come, going forward. Is it weird for you seeing him back there? Because it feels feels like it was just a couple of years ago when he was there. Yeah, no, it, it it's been 
it's been a little adjustment for me, but I think honestly, it's been pretty seamless. I, I feel like even when Chris was here, he was coaching up the guys. So, um, but now it's just a bigger role, a little more of accountability for him, but he's done a great job in these first four practices of getting those guys ready. And, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what he continues to do for us. You were talking about Noah and the way he's been doing a better job of holding guys accountable. I, he wasn't always the most talkative guy, at least with us in the past. How has he maybe had to grow and mature into a role like that? Yeah, that's something that we've really had to push to him and Nick is just saying, hey, you got to come out of your shell a little bit, right? To hold guys accountable. Uh, yeah, it's gonna. there is a vocal part of that um, that you're going to have to – you know, say stuff when guys are not doing it the right way or when they are doing it the right way, making sure you're pointing that out as well. And so with both of those guys, the vocal part of it has progressed and it's gotten better and it's needed. And uh, yeah, just like you guys know, Noah is not the most talkative guy, but when he does get on the field, I do think he is very talkative. He's very communicative. And so is uh, Nick as well. They do a great job of communicating our calls and getting the defense lined up and making sure we're in the right uh, alignments, but also making sure we're in the right coverages as well. And so um, I would say both of those guys are progressing really, really well to be strong leaders for us. Uh, Noah said that, you know, last year left a bad taste in their mouths and how the defense kind of performed. Have you seen that extra edge from this group coming into this camp? You know, Noah said that he felt more comfortable coming this camp because there's no COVID protocols or COVID worries. Yeah, yeah, I think that... Uh, in these first four practices that we have, it feel it just feels so different as a defense. It feels back to normal. Like for us, we just I think there's an energy and an edge and a hunger that our guys have that, hey, what we showed on the field last year was not us. That is not who we want to be as a defense. And uh, you know, I think from what I've seen and what we've noticed as a coaching staff, it just looks and sounds and feels way better than it did a year ago. And I think a lot of that's the credit to this to these guys that came back, the Joey Blunts the Mandy Alonzos, the Devontae Crosses, these guys that took this extra gear to come back, Elliot Browns that said, hey, we're coming back because we want to leave this team um, better than how we left it last year. And they're trying to leave their mark on this program. And some of these guys, Nino Grants, that have you know, been here for six years, and uh, having that experience with us, it just shows. And it's been fun to watch these guys fly around for the first four practices. When you, in that same vein, when you look back at like you know your enter entering your six, I guess. I'm sorry if I'm getting the math wrong. I'm like, how long have you been in Charlottesville? But like looking back on year one, where you started with the defense and the starting point, having to teach everything to where you are now, having players that know the system help teach the younger guys, how much, like, what is that? What has that difference been like? And how much of a difference oh, yeah. has it been? <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 night, it's night and day. I mean, from where we, where we were at this time in 2016 to now, uh, it's like, you can't even compare it. And just to, when we showed up last Friday and we went into our first practice and all the things that we were able to do and to execute at a high level, uh, we weren't able to do that till shoot, maybe the end of the season of 2016 or maybe till the beginning of 2017. And just having the number of guys that have played in this defense and the experience that they've had and the success that they've had, um, I think has allowed us to start as fast as we started this fall camp. And it's, yeah, we're farther ahead than we've ever been in four days. Um, and uh, excited to see where this uh, where this thing goes. We've got time for about one or two more questions for Coach. Should we interpret um, the fact that Elliot's working some inside as you have more options at the outside spot? Uh, no, he, I just like him at both spots. So I just think he, yeah, that's the versatility. And even Noah can do it. I mean, you guys probably didn't even know there was times when Charles did it as well. There's times when Peace did it as well. So there's just, there's very subtle things that we do to where these guys, you know, might look like they're playing outside backer, but they're playing inside backer or vice versa. And so that's the versatility that we like to recruit. And I would say Mike Green is in that same mold. I would say Josh McCarron is in that same mold of being able to play outside and inside backer. And I would say even Wes Weeks, even though I haven't done it with Wes yet, uh, I would say he'd be able to do that as well. He's been running with the, uh, with the ones for that outside spot opposite, opposite Noah. The outside linebacker spot? It's really, yeah, it's gotten, like I said, it's been a combination between Elliott, between Hunter, um, who's the other guy I'm missing one more, between TC. It's been a combination of those guys of who's playing outside backer and who's playing inside backer. Thank you. Kind of along those same lines, but now that you have all the linebackers, not just the outside linebackers, consolidating that, how, how has that maybe streamlined things in practice? Yeah, really what we've done is just 
so I'm over all of the linebackers, but really having Chris Peace here has really helped us divide things up into him help, helping out more with the outside backers. Um, and so you could say it's not as how it was with me and Coach Hunter, where I was always with the outsides and he was always with the insides. There's times where we're all together as linebackers more than we've ever been. Um, but there's also times where we're split up. And when we split up, I'll take the inside backers. Coach Peace will take the outside backers. And there's times where it might change, where he might take the inside backers and I take the outside backers. So um, a lot of it's just, yeah, the versatility of it all, that's the key. They got to know the whole defense and know all four linebacker positions. And, uh, and so do the coaches as well. So um, that's what I love about this defense is it just, yeah, it moves guys around. Offenses don't get used to knowing where certain guys are lining up and they have a hard time because a lot of times they're just keying a guy, hey, watch out for number six or slide the protection to number seven or you know whatever it may, do, may be. And so that in this defense and the versatility that we can bring, I think we can bring some issues uh, to offenses with that.